What's up, you guys? Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is the second part for Queen's Rule. So, in this section, we'll be kind of doing a little more uh, some manipulation with Queen's Rule. Okay? So, let's get started with our first integral. So, we have sine cube over sine of x plus cosine of x. So it's not like the usual where we could just do u equals pi over 2 minus x and then pi over 4 is our answer, right? This is, this is something else. So, let's see, let me go ahead and abbreviate this uh, for now. Let u equal pi over 2 minus x. So when we abbreviate it, we'll get like cosine cube, right? But the bottom will always stay the same because commutative property. Right, the denominator doesn't really change. So here, so we have sine cube, cosine cube. When we do two i, add two integrals, we get sine cube plus cosine cube. And this actually simplifies to sine square minus sine cosine plus cosine square aha sine square plus cosine square is just one so that's very nice we have one minus sine cosine and so now what we have is this is equal to pi over 2 minus uh, let u equal sine of x u du then we get 0 1 this is equal to pi over 2 minus a half I believe that's correct <laughs> I think so I think that's correct uh, u square over 2 uh, so I guess our answer will be careful this is 2i remember this is 2i don't forget that this is 2y. So our answer should be pi minus 1 over 4. I believe that is our answer. So there's another trig identity that we must learn. And I'm about to show you that right now. Here, we need sine pi minus x. This is equal to sine of x okay it's just sine of x for cosine however pi minus x is equal to negative cosine of x which is why we have that square aha so what's gonna happen is when we perform u equals pi minus x here's what's going to happen this x becomes pi minus x okay and then sine of x stays the same and then 1 plus cosine squared stays the same right without that square this would be minus which would not help at all okay but now you're wondering, okay, but how does this help with Queen's Rule, right? Well, notice that this is, if I let this equal to i, I'll put it in red. This is equal to i, okay? Notice that this, I'll, I'll have it as i because they both equal the same thing. i, if we separate this from 0 to pi, we have pi sine of x 1 plus cosine square okay but what about the other term we have minus and then the integral of x sine of wait a minute wait a minute that's the same thing here right isn't that the same thing here but with a negative so we te we technically have minus i Aha! Uh -huh. Now we put that to the other side, to y is equal to from 0 to pi. We can just abbreviate this, pi.
pi sine of 1 plus cosine square dx. And now it, we can just go ahead and integrate this. I'll put this as pi over 2. So now with this, this integral is equal to pi over 2. So what we have, our answer is pi square over 4. And that is our answer. Okay, a little tricky, but this integral is also very common, so you should definitely get used to uh, that integral. Okay, outlet of tangent of x. What is this? Well, if you let u equal pi over 2 minus x, you, could, you, sh you should be able to see that this becomes, well, tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. So when we do the substitution, you get cosine of x over sine of x. In other words, we have cotangent of x. Wait a minute, but then this is equal to negative outlet of tangent x. So what we have here is i equal to negative i. What does it mean when we have i equal to negative i? It means that the integral is zero. Okay, when i is equal to negative i, the integral is equal to zero. Okay? Okay. So we have sines and cosines. Our bound is from zero to pi over two. Let's try Queen's rule. Let's see what this does. So, if we try Queen's rule, we know that this equals from 0 to pi over 2, cosine squared cosine, 1 plus sine and cosine, right? The denominator doesn't change. And then if we try 2y, add it together, we get sine squared sine, cosine squared cosine, Aha! Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this all cancels out, which means that our integral, pi over 2 divided by 2, this integral is pi over 4. Look how fast that was, right? This is, this is how amazing Queen's rule is. It's so helpful. It's very fast. Okay, so definitely get used to Queen's rule. What the hell? This looks very weird. What do we even do? Huh. This is very weird. We, we have sines and cosines, and we have 0 to pi. Okay, so maybe some queen's rule, queen's rule might work, but uh, I don't know where this is going to lead to. I don't know where this is going to lead to. But let me go ahead and abbreviate this. Now, if we let u equal pi minus x, all I'm ever going to get is just dx 1 plus sine negative cosine. But now what? Ooh, how about multiplying top and bottom by sine to the power of cosine? Then maybe this equals to 0 pi sine cosine sine cosine plus 1 dx ah uh, would you look at that though we have this formation and this formation ooh so if we add these two integrals together what do you get you get sine to the power of cosine plus 1 which is what we have at the bottom as well. They cancel out, right? So this is one. So our answer is pi over two, okay? A little tricky, a little tricky, but just, uh, just a little bit of algebraic manipulation, that's all. So we have an integral from Harvard MIT math tournament. What do we do? So, let's see. I see a 0 and pi over 2, so maybe we could do some queen's rule, maybe. 
Well, let's try it, right? If we try queen's rule, I see that I get Allen of two cosine square, and I get Allen of tangent of x dx. Okay. Remember, with tangents, right? Of course, we're still converting sines and cosines, and so with pi over two minus x, cotangents becomes tangents, or they they convert to each other. All right. So now what? What do we do here? Well, what we technically have. See if we if we combine these two integrals. What we technically have is ln cotangent of x, ln of 2, let me actually abbreviate this, 2 sine square minus ln of 2 cosine square. Interesting, this algebraically, if you know your logarithm rules, the 2 cancels out. We get sine square cosine square, which is tangent square, right? And we have ln of cotangent here. Aha. Uh -huh. So what we have is we have 2 ln of tangent x minus ln of tangent x. They cancel out. So I guess we have negative 2 pi over 2 dx. And so let's see, this cancels out. So our integral is negative pi over 2. Okay. So our answer is negative pi over 2. Okay, this is our last integral for this section. So, how do we solve this problem here? Well, let's see, see a bunch of tangents. So, to pi over 2, let's see, if we try Queen's rule, if we use Queen's rule, we get ln of cotangent of x plus 1 over 1 minus cotangent x. Right. But algebraically, Algebraically, this equals, if you know, top and bottom by tangent of x, we get tangent of x, uh, tangent of x minus 1. Okay. And this is minus ln tangent x. Aha. So if we add this and this together then we get from pi over 2 let's see so this and this is going to cancel out right here we have tangent of x tangent x minus 1 this is minus 1 tangent of x minus 1 dx right and then of course this is also going to cancel out as 1 and so we have pi over 2 so our whole integral is equal to pi over 4 and that's it okay and there we have it that's it for this section I hope this video helps again rewatch and try it yourself and if you ever get stuck, watch the solutions again until uh, you become more comfortable with these techniques. All right? Okay. We'll start doing more uh, tricks with Queen's Rule. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.